everybody, Jonathan here with another Twin Motion tutorial, and I'm very excited to say Twin Motion 2024.1 just dropped recently in preview mode. And I'm going to take a look at, in my view, one of the biggest, most amazing new features of that new release. And let's see how this amazing new tool works in practice for you. So thanks for watching, everybody. Enjoy the video. Well, everybody, let's get started with this new Twin Motion tutorial to look at the new features of Twin Motion 2024.1. In particular, I'm going to be showing you uh, the amazing new features of this new scatter tool. But just before we do that, um, I just want to kind of walk you around this amazing scene. And this is the Iceland template that I've kind of just added to uh, with my own sort of automotive uh, car, as it were. But look at the kind of quality that we're getting out of Twin Motion these days in real time, just walking around this amazing Icelandic scene. So if you do want to get that, get it from the home file. So I've made a few automotive uh, tutorials in my time using Twin Motion, and it's actually really, really good for automotive visualization. Now the Audi R8 is one of my favorite cars that needs no introduction. So that's why I just wanted to kind of use this to create these visuals. Anyway, let's get back to the serious business of showing you how amazing the new scatter tool is. So if we click onto the populate panel and we go down to place, you'll see that we've got a number of different options and we've got a couple of new ones that I want to talk about in a moment as well. So let's have a quick reminder of a couple of the existing modes for placing objects uh, just before we get onto these amazing new ones. So make sure you hang around uh, to the end of the video where we look at these in detail. So the very first one, of course, is the standard paint option here. And what's really nice about this option is you can just drag across a number of elements to the Dropbox. So just choosing a bunch of different trees that I think will kind of suit this tutorial. Um, some of these sort of firs and pines look pretty good. So you can basically select as many if you like, then you can select all of them, get the brush, choose your density, and basically choose things like intensity as well. And then when you're ready, you can basically just paint. So, you know, the really nice thing about this tool is the ability to just uh, sort of paint very, very free form with a variety of random trees. We can also kind of rub those out using the eraser mode. And the other nice thing about this is you can always drag in additional trees into the mixing pot, as it were, and those will add randomly into the painted area. You can, of course, add things like rocks and uh, plants and things of this as well. So within a very, very short space of time, you know, you can generate really, really nice sort of looking random things like forests, planting and grass as well. So, you know, this honestly is an amazing tool in its own right. And if you're not using Twinmotion before, it's definitely one that you should use. However, let's have a look at the next mode. So this one is called Scatter. Now again, this isn't you, this is just to remind you of how you use these existing tools before we get on to the new uh, mind-blowing new features of the new scatter mode. So what I'm going to do is just drag in a base circle and click F to fit to it. Let's get a nice material, so I'm going to go over to my uh, ground and see if I can find some nice kind of groundscape to drag a material onto that base circle. Okay, great. So now we're set up, basically all we need to do is go over to our sort of vegetation as it were, let's do some bushes this time, drag those across to the Dropbox and um, you know what you can then do is basically once you've got a mixture of plants you can click onto the plus mode and you'll see that we can just select all those plants, click on the plus mode and basically click. As soon as we click on that base plate material it will basically add plants um, around randomly on that object as well. Now what's quite cool is, if you do want to, you can actually move the object. So if I move that base circle around, you know, the scattered material kind of goes with it. And actually if I scale it as well, um, that also scales out the object. And you can see, you know, if I wanted to, I could now increase things like the density and the scale of those plants. I could even go into the details and to remove or add more of them as well. So once again, you know, you're free to keep working with the scatter adding new elements to it as well. And um, if I did want that rock, I would just simply click on the plus mode and you can see the more I click, the more of those I get. So again, this isn't you. Uh, it's really just to remind those of you who've not seen this in Twin Motion before, how amazing this feature is. And once again, if we do want to, we can get an eraser and just sort of erase a path. Just remember to select all of the elements there 
And you can see we've done a really nice job just sort of erasing within the scattered area those elements that we had selected as well. So this is a really, really great mode for kind of creating rather randomized areas over a particularly large mode with the flexibility to move it around as well. Okay, so let's now go on to the next mode. Now, this is the first new mode that I want to show you that is only available in 2024.1 so far. And this is, remember, is a preview mode of Twinmotion before the final release. What you can see is you've got like essentially one called spacing. And what you really do is you draw a path. Okay, and you can see that once you've drawn the path, you have the option to basically start amending the uh, curvature of that path, if you like, the tension, I think they call it. You can move the points around just simply by clicking on those, uh, those dots and picking them up and sliding them around. So very, very easy. And then when you're ready to add some vegetation, all you need to do is drag them into the Dropbox, just scroll up a bit, and um, you can see I can drag in a bush and it starts to repeat. So with a single item, let's have a look at how we can vary the count. So you've got a, a really nice sort of slider here. You can basically either do the count or the distance uh, as preferred. And if you do want to, you can make you know, this quite dense as well. So let's pop that down to our scattered sort of path object. Let's do distance. You can see I can increase that distance quite dynamically or type different numbers here. So this is really good when you want to place um, things really accurately at certain distances or, you know, with a certain number of items as well. Now, the great thing is you can actually drag more items in um, as well. So a bit like the other tools where you can actually post edit them and increase the variety of the planting. So we've got real control over the path itself. We've got real control over the objects that are actually being placed. And we've got this lovely ability to either randomly place them or place them by um, sort of number and so on as well. Now, the final one that I'm just showing you here is you've also got a random offset. Um, so this means you've got a lateral offset for the path. So it means that the path is a bit wider. So it places things a little bit more randomly within the zone that you can see, the orange zone. And the wider that is, the slightly more randomized that path will be. So really, really amazing uh, feature, this new path-based mode. So I'm gonna show you how this is used later in the tutorial, and you'll see this is honestly absolutely mind-blowing uh, for a number of different use case scenarios, for sure. So I really do love the way that you can kind of keep playing around with the item, um, keep dragging in more things to the Dropbox. If I drag some rocks in, they'll be added as part of that kind of spaced item as well. And then I can actually increase uh, not only the overall kind of spread, but I can actually increase the just the rocks as well. So I have real control over each element within the spaced scatter. So I really like the way you've got total control over the individual objects uh, within the element itself just by selecting them and then you can just increase the number or count of those individuals. So this is going to give us a huge amount of flexibility for twin motion uh, to create these sort of lovely areas and you'll see how I apply this in the tutorial shortly in a moment. Okay, so now let's look at the next new item. This is called Scatter by Area. Now, this is actually really, really nice for creating big areas of planting and things like this. So let's put some trees in. So I'm gonna go through and drag in a few favorite trees. Really good little tip actually, before you kind of like start dragging, is just think about the favorites that you actually want to use maybe for a particular tutorial and pre-select them first. So that actually makes it a little bit easier when you actually come to do the selection in a moment. So you can see that I'm just going through selecting some of these firs and pines and things like that. And if I do want to, I can actually search for pine, see if there's any that I didn't actually get to. And I can also favorite those too. So we should have a nice little group of ready-made trees that I can kind of select very easily because I've actually done the hard work and actually pre-selected them first. So by clicking on my favorites button, now I only see those ones I just favorited a moment ago, and that makes it a lot easier when I'm actually coming to select, rather than actually having to scroll through hundreds of plants and trees that Twinmotion offers you. Okay, so off we go then. Let's draw our area with the Twinmotion sort of new tool. And again, you can see it's very easy to draw, and we really kind of get like a pen-based object. Once you click, immediately it will get filled with randomized selections from your Dropbox of things like trees and plants. So already this is looking pretty amazing. 
Um, what I really like about this is you can actually kind of like just click onto the path itself and basically stretch it out. So let's click on that point, move that point out immediately as soon as you let go of the mouse, it will basically update and fill that whole area with trees as well. So this is really, really good for sort of big groups and areas where you've got a lot of control over both the shape and also things like the curvature and individual points as well in that path. So if we go into the options of the tool itself, um, you're going to see a number of things like uh, edge fall off, particularly nice. So what this does, it kind of makes the uh, trees a bit less prevalent towards the edge of the perimeter of the area itself. We've also got things like the path tension and of course things like spacing so you can kind of really space them out or make them incredibly dense as well. We've also got a, an element of randomness in there and things like probability too and basically what you can actually do is select the individual trees once again and increase things like probability of that particular tree so there's more of them as well. So huge amounts of flexibility and I think really well thought through as well as varying the entire object, you've got these settings per object. As you can see, you can increase uh, the scale of just one particular tree or the randomness of one particular tree as well within the sort of scattered area. So I really, really love this new mode and I'm very excited to show you how I use this in the tutorial in a moment too. Okay, so let's actually go back and turn on the other elements within this Icelandic tutorial. Um, by the way, I was actually doing all of this within this template file, uh, just so you know. Um, all I did was actually manage the visibilities and basically turn on just the starting ground. So I've turned pretty much everything off apart from the road. This is all I'm interested in, the road and just my car. So what I'm going to do to begin with is go into my uh, Dropbox here, basically go to Scatter and I'm going to do a spacing scatter to begin with. So before I actually do anything, I'm actually just going to draw the path. So you can see it's quite nice and easy to draw the path with no distraction of any objects just now. So when I'm ready, I can now go over to my favourites and start dragging in those trees. You can see I can drag in a bit of a mixture just so we get a bit of nice sort of randomness to the trees. And now I can actually start playing around with things like the path tension and the increase of the count of those trees. So maybe if I want to kind of just uh, take a little look at that in a bit more detail, I can now go over to my other path object and basically try a different one on this side. So let's just draw a separate path. Now, you know, this would have been actually uh, probably doable with the painting tool, but without the level of control over things like the spacing and the randomness that I'm getting with this new spacing mode. So this really is perfect for things like roads. And obviously, you know, a lot of the visualization projects that people do, this will be quite an important um, factor, I would have thought be able to place things sort of neatly along a curve path um, around that road, that would have been much, much harder before. So this is absolutely fantastic. Let's drag in um, a couple of extra elements, things like some rocks. So just for a moment, I'll turn off the favorites. Yeah, let's go and get some of these lovely rocks and drag that in. And maybe if I click onto the rock and scroll down to individual settings per object, I can actually kind of just increase the amount of those rocks just on that area there. And you can see um, that density thing, really, really good. You know, the count, so 67 trees overall, or, you know, you just use a bit more of a randomness element there. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so I think I'm pretty happy with my scatter. So all I need to do now is click back onto one of my sort of set views, and I can see these lovely trees curving around the road as I was hoping for. And if I check out some of the kind of pre-made visuals in this Icelandic template, they already look pretty amazing with my new Audi R8 in there. And I'm going to show you how I can enhance these visuals even more. Okay, so let's take a look at the scatter area mode in a real sort of situation where this could work really well. So I've just seen my camera up a bit into the air with that sort of drone mode. And you can see this amazing Icelandic landscape looks fantastic. But I'm going to go to the polygon mode and this time I'm going to go for the area mode. And what's really nice is um, you'll notice the kind of path I'm drawing, if you like, is actually snapping. So it kind of like really is cool the way it snaps to the ground, even though that ground level is different um, elements there. And if I do want to, I can just sort of drag my, pop my Dropbox out to the side there 
And let's go for my trees. And I've got my favourites, of course, here, which I, you know, saved me a lot of time by kind of pre-favouriting. If you like, that's a really nice little tip I'd recommend. And let's drag in some of those trees into the Dropbox. We've got a nice little mixture. Maybe let's fiddle around with the, the density a little bit and things like the spacing. And basically, this looks pretty good. Let's give it a bit of edge fall off as well. And, you know, those look quite dense. But what's really nice is I can hold the shift key down, copy that whole area off somewhere else, and then I can start to modify, rotate, change the shape as well. So this makes it really easy to create sort of editable chunks of things like landscape. And, you know, this was something that we couldn't really do quite the same way before with the painted vegetation or the scattered vegetation as well. Okay, so I want to take, take my camera down to eye level. And one of the things I was thinking would be really cool is to set up an animation, basically moving around as if I'm driving up this road and I just want to kind of like preview it. So here I am in real time, in twin motion, literally uh, just driving off and crashing off the road a little bit there. But basically, when I kind of move around to this area, I can see it's looking a bit barren on this side here. So, you know, this preview, the ability to preview in real time is just unbelievable. You know, and previously in other software, we would have had to render out so many frames to do this. But this is the real strength of real time rendering with twin motion. So I'm going to go to my spacing once again. I'm going to click on spacing. I'm going to go and basically drag in some trees. In fact, even before I drag them in, what I'm actually going to do is just kind of click my path. Basically place that path curving round. You know, that would have been actually really quite tricky to do with some of the other methods. Um, let's go over to my trees again. Don't forget, I've got my favourites there. That saves so much time. And sometimes I do this for different projects. I have different groups of favourites. And look at that, I can just increase the count there. If I do want to randomise a little bit, I can just introduce uh, another item in there. And that looks extremely natural very, very rapidly. So this new tool is honestly going to be one that I'm going to be using all the time in my tutorials. And listen, if you do want to learn Twin Motion, please reach out to me. Um, I do training all over the world. I've got 20 years experience as an architect and a visualisation artist. And I've worked with some amazing clients literally all over the world these days via Zoom. So I love teaching and training and it's something that I'm very passionate about. Normally within a few hours and a few sessions, I can get you from, you know, almost complete beginner to really being quite proficient in the software. Well, everybody, I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. It's been super fun to make. The new scattering tools in Twinmotion 2024.1 preview are pretty amazing. I think you'll agree. As is, I hope you think, my lovely Audi R8 here as well. So now that Twinmotion is free for anybody earning less than a million dollars, there's nothing to stop you downloading and trying to use it. And that's where I can come in with my tutorials and my bespoke training to help you learn it in record time. Good, so let's round off this video with a little trip down the Icelandic road with my new Audi R8 being overtaken by that car, but we're enjoying the drive. Thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.